hello, that camera seems like so far away. I'm like, hello, record. Welcome to Gemstone Tarot. <laughs> Tuesday, 20th of October, 2020. I got the longest hot water bottle in the whole world. <laughs> this is amazing. So look, you can, you can do that. I was doing that yesterday. Or you can just put it on your knee. There you go, just showing you my hot water bottle. Valentine is outside. She has been guarding the house and generally kind of looking. She's at a vantage point, really high up, sort of scaling the alley. Scaling, is that even a word? I think we better get on with it. Okay, for some reason, I was looking in the moon diary today and there is a bit on the sun going into Scorpio. And I'm going to read that to you, and I don't even know why, but I think it's a bit relevant, okay? Then we'll pull a few cards. Okay, 22nd of October, which is Thursday. Rapidly encroaching darkness consolidates the process of dying to the self in the green world. Abandoned by the uplifting forces of the sun, the sap falls and carries life back into the dark underworld in whose deep still waters chemistry works its magic. In that cauldron of change, redundant forces are broken down to release nourishment for next year's generation. Those waters provide the perfect medium for decay and fermentation. It's cheerful, this message. Nature's mysterious process of change and transformation, which of course is Scorpio, over which the individual has no choice or control, but which nonetheless, if the relationship is harmonious, and it has put that in um, quotes, generates the potential of new life. Now, I sense someone trying to slightly glitter a turd there because um, that's a little bit dark. It's scorpionic. So, we got Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. And I know, of course, weather-wise, that doesn't apply to you if you're in Australia and places like that because you're coming into spring and summer but you're still coming into scorpio okay i'm just going to adjust the hot water bowl so we're thinking scorpio 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 and i'm thinking t.s Eliot again love song of alfred j proofrock which comes to me all moments of the day um i'm hearing there's a line in that that says the voice is dying with a dying fall i hear the voice is dying with a dying fall, something like that. I'm wondering if I've even, I haven't got it right next to me. On my window ledge, I've got random poetry books <clears throat> and some unplanted bulbs. Yeah, look, there's actually a snail on this one. <laughs> I don't know why, look, we've got a snail. Uh, these ones are, what are they? I don't know what they are. You know I'm no planter, mixed iris. And then we also have, Narcissus. So hopefully, people, they will get planted over the weekend in some kind of, I don't know, I was going to say bucket. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a gardener. Plant pot. Okay. I hear the voices dying with a dying fall. I also get, I do not think that they will sing to me. This is going to be a weird reading, I can tell. Okay, Brian and Wendy Frude, Heart of the Fairy Oracle. I knew you'd be in there. What a strange collection. Okay, I've taken three cards to kick off today's reading, which is clearly going to be a bit unusual. The Elven Knight. Now, the Elven Knight, hi Valentine, the Elven Knight is the, <laughs> you can hear the cat flap, is the divine masculine energy, okay, that runs through the forest like a big, um, kind of electric, masculine brr force, okay? Grow roots down, make trees big, okay? That's me miming the masculine force. Do you like that, Val? Then we get the leaving, which is a bit like, there's something I need to know, so I'm off on a quest, I've got my knapsack, and I'm just having a word with the elder to get a little last piece of parting wisdom before I go, okay? And then we get this chap, the Prince of Shadows. So this is the shadow side. It's a very scorpionic, you know, if I was gonna guess, I'd say he was a Scorpio, he's got scorpionic eyes, okay? Deep and dark, 
and a bit brooding and interesting, okay? Now, so we're dealing with the energy of leaving something behind. And we've had for the last two or three weeks the energy of the High Priestess, um, the Queen of the Toilet Rolls, coming out and trying to kind of show that we need a softer side to our intuition and our inner wisdom as we are challenged by the astrology of October. Okay, now I am not an astrologer, but I'm kind of sensitive to astrology and, you know, I'm an optimistic soul, as you know, but I can sense the um, tension in the planets. I can sense it, okay? Um, we've got Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. That's almost all I need to know, to be honest. But then add in whatever else is going on, which you can find on Cafe Astrology, Molly McCord, Gregory Scott, any of those people. It's challenging, okay? Our shadow sides, our deepest most primal human uh, emotions and shadows are being called out to the light. And once we've kind of, and this sounds a bit esoteric, but once we've kind of, once they've emerged from the shadows, we're then required to do something about it, the leaving, to go on a journey. And do you remember we've had the hermit pop up several times as well? So the hermit, of course, the fool is on a journey through the tarot, and that's your major arcana, and at one point he becomes the hermit. The fool embodies the archetype of each one of the um, major arcana. So when he becomes the hermit, he's kind of copped on to the fact that there's something going down, that he might need to rest and ignore distraction and go within, okay? Nice cards. So I've taken a couple of El Goliath cards. Is it the king? Yeah, we've got the King of Cups and we've got the Eight of Swords. This is about mastering. So I'm just watching Valentine jump on my work surfaces. Uh, this is about mastering emotions. But the King of Cups, you know, it's not the page and it's not the night. This is the deep stuff. We're going to be called upon, I think, as the sun moves into Scorpio this week to recognize our shadows, identify them, and then when I say do something about them, I think that sounds a little bit direct, and then go on the journey, okay? That's the only way I can put it. That's nice, Valentine. She's now walking in the dish drainer next to the sink and working out her next move. There's a lot of dishes there, Val, aren't there? But you can weave in between them beautifully. Very elegant, sweetheart. Okay, I'm using, oh God. I'm using Smells Like the 70s. Okay. This competition, okay, I've got the Queen of Wands in reverse, which is a bit of a nightmare card. It's someone who's a bit dominant, who's a bit argumentative, and who may require you in the sort of 3D world to stand up for yourself, okay? We may have to go and retrieve Valentine in a minute because she's getting really cheeky. So we've got the Queen of Wands in reverse. We've got the King of Pentacles in reverse. People you could normally rely on or things that you could normally rely on, perhaps if you have comfort mechanisms may not work for you while Mercury's retrograde in Scorpio and all this other stuff is going on. It's like having the rug pulled out from under you constantly, okay? And then you have to keep resetting. So we've got the Seven of Wands, Mars in Leo, the need to discover your big stick and the need to draw a line, draw a boundary. Now, I would say that this boundary is a shaky boundary and it's a temporary boundary, but it's still a boundary. You know, sometimes a situation with a person or a thing or whatever we're doing in life is a bit rocky and a bit um, challenging, you know, as they say. And when that happens, you may not get to make your boundary for the full situation because you don't have enough information. And to be honest, you're feeling a bit wobbly. You don't really trust yourself and you just think, right, for now, on the information I've got, I will draw this line, okay? I'm drawing it in the sand. I can kick it over whenever I want. That's the King of Cups because the King of Cups is kind of on the beach 
and I'm going to, this is what we call a movable feast. My boundary may move, but at each given time, it's where I choose it and I will state it, okay? This is an interesting reading. Magician in reverse, tricksters and manipulation, okay? There is a bit of this. You know, I'm not um, a reader that likes to sort of throw shade, you know, and old oh, people are doing this and everyone's against you and all that stuff. I don't think like that, really. But, you know, sometimes in life there is just a bit of a flavour um, where our own shadow side attracts people who are perhaps don't have our best interests at heart. Have you noticed that when you're angry, when you're angry and you go, you go through phases of attracting angry situations? I know I do. If I'm particularly got steam coming out of my ears for a few days or I'm feeling really childish or really, you know, like that. Um, that in shops, people will start being rude to me suddenly, you know, which never happens normally, but they will. And you think, God, the whole world is against me. There is some way in which we are pulling that towards us. And it's best to avoid that if we can. So let's recap, because this has been all over the shop, this reading. We've got some shadowy stuff as the sun moves into Scorpio, okay? It's going to bring up things in us which are going to feel primal and perhaps embarrassing and petty and annoying. And it's most of our own, what we would perceive to be weaknesses. Once we can accept them as our shadow side and integrate them, people will stop showing up to show us what they are, okay? Until then, characters, competition, trickster information, misinformation, stuff will show up which will challenge it, okay? Keep that movable feast of a boundary going until such time, which will be a few weeks, as this calms down. Isn't it, Val? And then we get the full. We're on a journey. We've got the leaving and we've got the full. So we're starting off on a journey of sun in Scorpio energy, okay? We're going to move through that. I wish everyone could see you, Valentine, because you're so gorgeous, aren't you? You keep flicking your tail. Not that one. Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. The Arrow Master hitting the mark with intention and detachment. Detachment is the big word for that because intention, actually that isn't us, I think that's others um, firing arrows at us. The Lady of Lightning, paradigm shift, sudden surprises, sometimes shock. There may be a few surprises. Now, we've had a new moon in Libra and we're heading for a full moon on Halloween. And I know there's squares and stuff going on with Uranus and Pluto and things like that. Again, go and look at the proper astrology. But surprises are definitely kind of in the air now of course we can't say what they are they wouldn't be a surprise now would they but just keep resetting that boundary resetting that line okay right i'm going to leave it there because this is quite a weird reading please leave me a comment and let me know what you think and i will see you tomorrow namaste